right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ruben Dua, who is just up the road in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Ruben? All good. Thank you so much, John. Great to be here. Yeah, and Ruben's the co-founder and CEO of Dub, a popular video sales platform that helps businesses increase 30x plus and work with over 65,000 businesses, including well-known ones like Keller Williams, Grant Cardone, Fannie Mae, XP Realty, whose sales teams use the platform. And Ruben, over 20 years of marketing experience, you also authored two books, Click Record, How to, How Overcoming Fear, Storytelling, and Video Marketing Can Change Your Life. Uh, and uh, sorry, overcoming fear, storytelling, and video marketing can change your life. Uh, video be or Amazon bestsellers. And what we're going to talk about today is video uh, and sales, and how video is just taking over everything. I mean, clearly, when we're on video now, um, Ruben. But uh, so uh, when it comes to sales in particular, I mean, you've done a lot of work, obviously, with Grant Cardone and people like that. It's like video has become so uh, such an integral part of sales. But at the same time, it's not leveraged by everybody because they still don't really understand the power of it. So uh, how about as a starting point, why should people who have not really embraced video, especially on, on the, from the sales side, why should they be embracing it now? Well, I think there's, there's a premise that I always like to start with, <clears throat> which is the difference between scale and growth. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference between these two things, as, as my definition sets out that sets this out as is that scale is when you don't require additional inputs and growth is when you do you both both of those things attain the same thing mm -hmm. you're going to get an increase in revenue and sales and ult ultimately commissions and earnings for all the stakeholders but the great thing about scale is that you don't have to go and invest in more sales reps and in more advertising dollars you can use the things that you already have and then invest in technology processes practices you know, better ways, a better machine to get more results, right? So mm -hmm. the, the thing that's so powerful about video is that it allows us to clone ourselves. I mean, every single video that I've ever created on YouTube or social media mm -hmm. or using the Dub platform as a video message to a prospect or a partner or a podcast invite or a podcast pitch, whatever it may be, that is effectively uh, a clone of myself in some capacity. And that video can exist on a landing page and people can consume it and share it and watch it again and reshare it and click on a button below to connect with me, book a time in my calendar, uh, you know, follow me on TikTok or me. YouTube, whatever it is that they want to do. And it's basically like my new sales force. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to scale, use video. Now, the most common objection that I get is that, well, I don't feel comfortable being on video. Well, that's okay. No one feels comfortable being on video. It takes us a while. We have to do at least a hundred public facing videos to actually get comfortable. And before we do those hundred videos, we need to do another hundred before that, that we end up just probably throwing in the trash can. And then all of a sudden we realize that the way that we look on camera is kind of similar to the way that we look on video. But the great thing is that we can have a controlled environment. We can mm -hmm. have a landing page and calls to action and we can have a clear, concise message. So use video, scale yourself, you'll make more money. Yeah, and it's interesting, it's interesting what you say, like there's still a little bit of resistance to it um, because people say, well, you know, I, I don't feel good on video. But to your point, I mean, I mean, back in the day, you remember when you heard yourself, your voice recorded for the first time, you're like, well, I don't sound like that. And everybody else <laughs> is going, well, no, actually you do. Uh, and the same thing, I think you have to just, I think you have to just get over it because let's face it. I mean, most salespeople are comfortable walking into a room full of strangers, Yeah. but this, because this is a camera, they suddenly freeze up instead of embracing it in much the same way. Mm. Yeah. Well, well said. Yeah. So what would you, um, so how would you advise somebody who's saying, okay, I want to, I want to scale now and I want to use video and, uh, but I don't really know where to start. What would you advise okay. them to do? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, let's let's talk about planning. Yeah. Um, what I always like to recommend is that people draw their business. Like if you can draw your business, if you can draw your whole funnel, your whole process from A to Z, from the time someone hears about your brand or watches a video of you or lands on your website or meets you at a conference or shakes your hand or whatever it may be to the point that they become a client, 
Um, why don't we just draw that out? Like, let's get on a big whiteboard. Let's use a software. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use, you know, Google Drawings. That's a very basic one. There's some more. There's some more elaborate ones like Visio and a couple of ones like that. Sure. But it really doesn't matter what you're using. Just use something to document your business and to document the process. And once you document document that process, you can you can start to understand where is it that I can use artificial intelligence? Mm -hmm. Where is it that I can use automation? Where is it that I can add video? And you'll probably quickly realize that at basically every step of your sales funnel, there's an opportunity to have a touch point. And yeah. I don't like the term touch point. I'm not yeah. a huge fan of that. My, my thing on that is let's use a video. Let's have a human connection, right? Let's mm -hmm. share a story at some point. So let's just say that you send someone a cold email, or let's just say that someone meets you at a conference. Mm -hmm. That is an opportunity to share a video with them, right? Right. Right off the bat, you can introduce yourself. You can introduce your company. You can have a playlist video that allows you to play other videos of testimonials of other clients that you've worked with, you know, what your product offers, what your service offers, what type of results people get, what are the case studies, what is the social proof, right? Uh, and then we move down the funnel and now we're at the sort of decision-making stage, let's mm -hmm. just say, and someone's, they know about you, they've heard the pitch, they've met you a couple of times and they're potentially ready to buy. That's when we need to show more social proof. And this is why we always talk about video testimonials. Yeah. So if you dissect every single aspect of your sales funnel, you realize that you can add that human connection touch point and that adding video and some automated workflows is going to help you scale at a massive level. Yeah. And and I think no I I totally agree I totally agree with you and I think that's that's a fantastic starting point because I mean people should do that anyway but I guarantee if you look at your end to end process today or go through it not only will you find opportunities for inserting video but you'll probably find opportunities for uh efficiency enhancements because you should be revisiting this all the time. But what I love about what you're saying there is there is a huge craving for human connection mm. and therefore inserting that human element, albeit by video, is really appealing to kind of where people are at today. Yeah, it's it's true. I mean, this is the missing component. It's very simple. The missing component in sales, in marketing, in the human experience is mm. that human connection. Yeah. Um, in fact, now we're seeing a lot more artificial intelligence. We're seeing avatars. We're seeing, we don't know what's real, you know, deep yeah. fakes and talking avatars and music that's created by bots and copy and love poems and love songs. And, you know, you don't know what's real anymore. So what we always yearn for, what human beings always yearn for is that human connection. Mm -hmm. That is, that is what we are. It is ingrained in our spirit and our DNA to be seen, to be heard, to express ourselves. So if we apply that to sales, all of a sudden it allows us now to to be vulnerable, to share our life stories. You know, one of the stories that you and I shared is what the bullies when we were kids used to call it, what our bully names were. You know, my bully name was Do a Diddy, right? That's my last name's Do it, so they call me Do a Diddy, and that's a vulnerable. You know, and I can laugh about that story now, but I wasn't laughing when I was in the fourth grade. <laughs> No, but and uh, I was just saying AI, you... AI is not going to write that. AI doesn't mm -hmm. understand that. It's going to take a command that a human being does, and it's probably going to make something up if it does. But the fact that that story is my story can now build an empathetic, um, you know, parasocial relationship with someone that's rooted in that true human connection. Yeah, because what's and just mine was Goldilocks, just in case anybody cares, <laughs> <laughs> cares to know. Um, hey, it's good. No... It's good to have gold in your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great point because the the especially as AI and especially as we start to get into this, where we have no longer know what's real. And it, and for those of you who haven't looked at a lot of the tools today, you should go look at them. I mean, it's getting pretty scary. Where you can now have, as you said, human video avatars. They're not one hundred percent perfect yet, but they're getting there. Yeah. Um, but what what they can't deliver is the authenticity, right? And that's I think that's what people are looking for. They're looking for authenticity. So if you introduce a, a, a video of yourself, like talking or whatever, at some point in the sales process, and you be yourself, and I think that's the other important part, Ruben, is 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 be yourself. Don't be somebody else when you switch on the video camera. It's it's true. Um, one of the things that I always talk about is there's this idea of being free in our lives and mm -hmm. being free my definition of being free is when you can understand your past 
um, understand what your goals are for the future and then be truly present in the moment. It's sort mm -hmm. of this combination. The key to this is to be present and you can't be present unless you really understand your past and frankly, where you're going. So, you know, I'm glad we mentioned, um, you know, bullying, you know, that's a real thing that happens to people. And a lot of us don't realize this, but the, the personality that we have created for ourselves and the person that we have become is a byproduct of trauma. It's a byproduct of people telling us negative things. You don't look good on video. You don't have a good voice for a podcast. Mm -hmm. You should not be doing sales meetings. You know, you don't look good unless you wear a suit. You know, there's, there's a hundred thousand, this is an infinite number of comments that we can receive from people. And then ultimately we're living in this sort of, um, you know, caged situation. The fact of the matter is that if you really want to connect with people, you have to go to your inner child. You have to go to your truest inner, inner happy state where if you're a guitarist, you throw in your guitar, you know, people can see it on your wall. If you mm -hmm. love sports, you talk about that. If you love to do stand up comedy and no one at work knows about it, you change that. You lean into it. You start to crack jokes and you tell people, of course, you have to do things tastefully. You can't sure. let these things affect your your productivity. But that, but at the same time, we want human beings. We want people that have real stories, real talents, you know, differentiators. You know, the the thing the, the thing that's so great is that you are different. Right. The yep. person listening to this podcast, there's nobody out there just like you. And that's what makes you absolutely perfect. So if you're trying to be everyone else, then you're going to be no one. Yeah. Or as, uh, as my fellow countryman, Oscar Wilde said, uh, be yourself because everybody else is taken. Everyone else is taken. Oscar said it the best. <laughs> And he but it's it, 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 fellow countryman. I forgot about that. Yeah, uh, but uh, but no, but it's it, it's a really good point because yeah. it's funny. It's like when you say to people sometimes, like, well, um, you know, what would I say on a video? Or if you talk about yourself, what would I write about? Whatever you just go, your experiences. I say, you, and to your point, is your experiences are unique. You have a unique perspective, and we're all storytellers at heart, deep down. We all come from. Uh, regardless of your cultural background, most cultures come from a storytelling tradition. Right? And so it's innate in us. So we just have to have people, uh, encourage people to actually, uh, you know, free that up. Because you mentioned freedom earlier. That's freeing too, is like to be able to tell your story. Well, I think one of the, one of the amazing things about storytelling is that when you share a story, and I, and I recently learned this being on uh, a podcast, um, my, my new friend Vince, um, he, he told me that, when someone when you share a story the way that the neurons fire in our minds is the same for the recipient for the listener is the same way that the neurons are firing when i deliver the story so if i tell you my story about my childhood and you're listening to it you are on that journey with me mm -hmm. right you're feeling empathy you're open it's different from a fact finding situation it's different from how we receive data and the amazing thing about this is that if we can tap into that vulnerability state, and if we can tap into that true essence of storytelling, that's when we can make that human connection. Every culture, just like you said, every culture is rooted in storytelling. That's how we convey history. That's how we mm -hmm. convey, that's how we pass information from one generation to the next. And now, of course, we have technology to be able to assist us with that, but the essence is the same. If you're not telling stories, you're not making a human connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and like I said, I mean, it comes naturally to mo even to people who say, I can't do that. You can turn around to them and say, well, you told me a story the other day. Oh, did I? Yeah, you did. And it was actually quite interesting. So you do, you have plenty of of stories inside you. But I think it just takes that confidence, as you said, is to be, is to be authentic and to be real. But the other good thing about it, if you put a video in front of somebody and they see you and they see your face and they hear your voice and all of that kind of thing, it does make it just a little bit harder to ignore you after that, right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. And one of the things that uh, that I'm going to do after we wrap this podcast is I'm going to build an integration into Pipeline or the CRM, and I'm going to make it so that people can grab, it's, it's this very simple Dub Chrome extension. You can record a video your webcam of your screen and then you can add that into any correspondence that you do that connects to your pipeline or crm so it's a it's an email it's a video email that you can send or if you send an sms however it is that you're communicating now you're going to be able to allow video so just to the to the users of pipeline you know yeah. 
let's let's stay connected here because you're look out for a, for an for a uh, for an integration. We're going to put it in our marketplace. Uh, that's that's fantastic because I do think I I do think that is what you're talking about is a missing piece because it's it's not e- it's not generally easy for people to do but all and if you make it easy for them that also ha- tends to overcome their fear of using it right because you know we love to hide behind that's a great excuse not to use something and think, well it's a little bit complicated and I need to involve this person and that person and do all of this um, when you make it simple for people then yeah. You're kind of taking out the barriers to entry, and you're almost leaving them no choice. Well, I think I think there's there's really I've experienced as the CEO of a software company, I've experienced um, a couple of different personality types when it comes to adopting a new technology or a new process and how to implement it. And I would just just to simplify this, I'll present the two personality types. Right. Personality one is someone that says, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to learn a technology. I'm going to learn everything it is that I can, in this case, on the Dub platform. And, and then after I'm done and after I feel confident, then I'm going to go start recording videos. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then there's a second personality type, which is the scaffolding type, which is I just want to send a video email. Let me grab the free Dub Chrome extension. Let me send a video email in 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. Video is better than text. People will watch a video. There's a call to action on the landing page. It's more effective, right? I always recommend that people do what's comfortable for them. Just make sure that you come out where you have something to show and something to drive results. Results is what everything, everything, everything depends on. So my only recommendation, no matter what personality type you are, is to reverse engineer whatever you're doing from a results perspective and mm-hmm. hold yourself accountable to make sure that if my goal is to send 10 video emails to my hottest prospects using Dub and Pipeline or CRM, I'm going to do that by the end of the week. Or if your goal is to something larger, like to increase your overall earnings or your overall revenue amount for the year, you have to reverse engineer that. And it starts with daily repetition. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, I think that's a really, really good point um, that you raised there, and just, just make, and just do, be deliberate about what you're doing because, and also look at, look at the value of it because here's the other thing: you don't want to use video to send, uh, to replace the emails that weren't effective in the first place. Like you don't want to send videos like, oh, hey, just checking in, wondering how everything is and where we are in the decision making, you know, stuff like that. That's not, that's not a valuable email and it's not a valuable video. You know, if someone hasn't responded to your email, it's really simple. There's a reason why someone hasn't responded to your email. It's because they're not convinced. It's because they haven't found a way to prioritize what it is that you're offering. And the most brutally honest thing that I can say is that if you are using language like I just wanted to follow up or I'd love to get you on a call or I'd love to hear more Mm -hmm. or I just wanted to see where you are in the decision making process, this this reeks of desperation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And there's a much better solution to this, in my opinion. And that solution is to figure out what it is specifically that they are trying to solve and then to create content or and then provide value to them. So if I know that I'm in touch with someone because they want to build a better widget and I know that the reason why they can't build that better and bigger widget is because the costs are too much. If I can understand how to mitigate those costs, all of a sudden now I become a valuable player for them. So saying I'd I'd love to jump on a call is not valuable. What is valuable is to do the research and to actually go and maybe find something that they haven't found. Use AI, ask AI, how do I decrease the expenses when creating this type of widget? You know, do do the research on the internet, go find information that they don't know yet and become their trusted advisor, become their confidant and become their consultant. Because then at that point, they'll they'll count on you they'll rely on you you will become the person that if you're gone they'll feel like you're missing from their lives <laughs> so the key here is to do research the key here is to do value and the key here is to use video when you can this is what we always talk about Re- find something valuable on the internet record mm-hmm. your screen grab the free dub chrome extension record your screen and send that as a video email and then watch what happens. Your, I promise you, your pipeline or CRM account is going to light up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I'm to be honest. If if uh, if I stopped getting, I just wanted it, or maybe we could just quickly jump on the call. If I could eradicate those emails from my mailbox, they'd probably be ninety percent cleaner. To be perfectly honest, 
Right. <laughs> well said. <laughs> well said. Yeah, because unfortunately, that's uh, <clears throat> still what people are defaulting to. Um, so, in the last couple of moments, uh, Ruben, just just give us some insights as when you, you've you've worked with companies when they have implemented this. Like, what are some of the what are some of the changes they've seen? Obviously, they've seen you know increases, but what are some of the other knock on effects? Well, email is one of the most effective channels in sales to this date. And my definition of effective is how much money we have to put in and how much output we can get mm-hmm. as a result of it. So, email is still a very viable channel. If you speak to most people in sales that are prospecting, you'll hear that they don't get the responses. They don't get the replies that they would love to receive. And I understand that. That makes sense to me. There's a lot of reasons why that's taken place. Number one is filters. You know, it's very hard to get a promotional email to go into someone's inbox. Yep. Promo folders, spam folders. You know, there's all sorts of MX lookup data and all sorts of DNS data that's preventing this. There's white lists and black lists and there's all sorts of stuff. If you actually dissect this, I've spent a lot of my time. I won't get into that now, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just say this, that it's become a lot more difficult to get your email into someone's in front of someone and then get them to respond to it. Yeah. So the way that we can overcome this is we can say, I am going to focus on value. I am going to focus on building a human connection and I'm going to be omnichannel. I'm not just going to do it via email. I'm going to connect with them on LinkedIn. I'm going to con- do research on their social media accounts, find them on Instagram. I'm not saying stalk people. I'm just saying find people, try to make a connection and be value oriented. It's very important. Um, You know, huge shout out to you guys for having this podcast. What a great platform so that you guys can connect with people. You know, I recommend right now, if you don't have a podcast, go create one. Because guess what? The reply rate on asking someone to be on your podcast versus hearing a sales pitch it's dramatically different. <laughs> You're probably going to get mostly yeses if you ask people to be on your podcast, mm-hmm. assuming that you have some brand with your podcast and you have some episodes and it looks nice and it's produced and whatnot. You know, get an example episode of, of a friend or someone that you know and show them a sample. But watch what happens when you when you provide value and you give them a stage. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's all about the results. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. And I, and I think it's, uh, we have so many opportunities and tools at our, our disposal that if we if we use them uh, intentionally and I like what you said about being in the moment I meant to come back to that about being in the moment there's something I think another compadre I think James Joyce in one of his talked about living at arm's length from yourself so that's when you know you're either too much in the future or too much in the past right so you're living at arm's length from yourself rather than being in the in the moment and in the present so i just wanted to come back to that because i just wanted to underline that that's a really important thing as well um listen ruben this has been fantastic all of ruben's information will be below this video but before we go please do tell us a little more about you and dub yeah so if you want to send simple If you want to send simple video messages to your prospects, if you want to get more replies, more bookings, and make ultimately that human connection that you've been looking to make, grab a free account on Dub. Check it out. We're going to make it integrate with Pipeliner CRM, and it's going to be really simple. There's a Dub mobile app. You can record a video. There's a Chrome extension. There's a desktop app, and it fully integrates with all CRMs. And the great thing about this is that you can add video to your communication, and you can drive more results. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, I would encourage everybody to go check out Dub, and uh, as I said, we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a Dub integration for Pipeliner, which is fantastic. Thank you. Let's do that. I'm in. Yeah, excellent. All right. Well, listen. Thank you for watching and listening. Thank you, Ruben, and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks. I'll stick around and share some notes. <laughs>